Good morning, everyone. So grateful for you tuning in today. It's a good day to be in God's presence. Amen. And uh, some of us are here on the campus, obviously the worship team and and our uh, media team. I, I want you right now, wherever you're at, just to give them a big hand. Can you do that? I know they can't hear you, but uh, uh, I want to say thank you uh, to them for their, their uh, incredible commitment to be here each week and also even practicing right now, uh, still working out some of our technical uh, kinks and each week just trying to, to be better and grow as we're all in this journey together and we're learning a lot uh, on, the, on the natural side, also in the spiritual side, for sure. So, so grateful that you are tuned in today. You look great. I'm saying that in faith because I can't see you. So I speak that over you today, that you look great. If somebody's close to you, there in your home or wherever you're at, uh, or if you're by yourself, look at somebody and say, you look great today. Would you do that? Come on. Even though you hadn't made yourself up, it's all good. You look good today. Speak it over yourself. Amen. We're going to get into the Word in just a moment. Let me just, uh, again, briefly speak to uh, kind of where we're at. Again, nothing to report. I I will uh, give some more information in the the next week or so, talking about some plans that we are uh, considering right now, but nothing nothing firm. Again, we're in a very much just a prayer mindset right now, want to walk in wisdom and uh, want to move slow and and calculated so that we are uh, doing what's right for you and for our church. Uh, and our community. And so we're going to uh, continue to do that. We have some meetings planned this week with our staff and going to put some things in motion, though, at least that uh, create some connect points. So you'll be hearing more about that in the coming days. So thank you for being a part uh, today. If you're not a part of Christ Community Church, we want to thank you for tuning in today. Hey, go online and fill, fill out a connection card, a virtual connection card. If you have a need in your life, remember that you can uh, let us know. We're praying over those each and every week. If there's something going on in your life, uh, even a need, we want to know about it. So you could take out your notes today. If you go to Version, those notes are provided there uh, on that app and go to live event, Christ Community Church, and the notes that we've provided are there for you. And you can also add notes uh, in there as well as you go uh, through. If you got something that maybe the Lord speaks to you, then write it down. I think that's one of the most spiritual things that we can do sometimes is to write things down. Remember, we wouldn't have the Word of God today if somebody didn't write it down. So write things down. It's powerful to do that. We've been in a series called Promise Land, and I'm going to uh, conclude this series today. And we've talked about a lot of things, about how to walk into the promise. We talked about what can keep us out of the promise. We talked about uh, how God sometimes calls us to do unorthodox things uh, to access the promise. And we've got to be willing to fight for the promise, right? God gives us the promise, but there's still uh, this part of possessing the, the promise that, that we play. And God plays with us. Amen. We're not by ourselves. And then last week, we looked at the character of Caleb. And we saw that Caleb had, number one, he had a great spirit. He had a great attitude. And we challenged ourselves uh, last week on Mother's Day to, to have a good attitude. I pray that you have been able to put that into practice this week. And, and hey, and if you messed up and you, you didn't quite get it, then guess what? His mercy's new every day. It's a new beginning this week. And you can start again with a good attitude. Somebody say amen. Good attitude. And we talked about how, uh, how Caleb serve the Lord wholeheartedly, the word, the word that was used there. And I, I kind of want to go back to that word here as we look today. Uh, I'm not going to really look at the Israelites, but I want to end this series of the promised land and talking about the promises of God in our life. You heard Pastor Zach speak that word uh, out of the psalm there during worship uh, about God's promises. We've been reminding ourselves of the promises that God has in store for us, and they are many. They're many. And we've got to understand them. We've got to know them and we have to possess them. And here's the deal. That requires, just like Caleb, a wholehearted attitude to serve God. And and I'm going to use the word today that it it requires diligence to access the promises of God. That the promises of God are yes and in Christ, amen. And then not just to access the promises of God, but to hold on to the promises of God. It requires diligence diligence. So I want to speak a message to you today uh, entitled Conquering with Diligence. Would you say that with me? Conquering with Diligence. So I want to talk about diligence today. Some of this will be a teaching. I just really felt like I needed to end this series with some practical uh, thoughts uh, about what diligence is, how it relates to our life spiritually, and how it allows us 
to hang on to the promises that God's given us. Again, they're already ours, but sometimes we have to fight to hang on to them. And, and God rewards those, as the scripture says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, who diligently seek after him. That's not in your notes, but you got to remember that's, that's a, uh, an important word for us. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. I'll end the message talking about that. I want to look in Proverbs today, and I've got a bunch of different scriptures out of Proverbs. You know, Proverbs is one of those uh, books of the Bible that really doesn't have a rhythm. Uh, it's just these nuggets of truth. Most of the book of Proverbs was written by King Solomon, we know was the, the wisest man that ever lived. And so a lot of these thoughts that he would have written down, they're kind of like always two tracks, right? It's this track or you can do this track. Uh, it's, it's a book of contrast. So you can either do this and this happens, or you can do this and this happens. You can either go this route and this is what will take place, or you can go this path and this is what takes place. And so uh, Proverbs is a powerful book of the Bible. I encourage you to read it. It's a great daily reading in your life because it's 31 uh, chapters. And so you could read one of those a day, a great way to implement it into your life. But as we talk about diligence, the book of, of Proverbs talks a lot about diligence. And so I just want to read through some of these scriptures and then we'll pray together. Here's the first one, Proverbs 10, 4. It says this, a slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. So again, you're going to see the word hand in this quite often as well. You can go to the next one, Proverbs 12, 24. The hand of the diligent will rule while the slothful will be put to forced labor. Come on. Nobody wants forced labor, but watch this. The hand of the diligent, right, is going to prosper, right? Sorry, you, you can keep going. Proverbs 12, 27. Whoever is slothful, that's a, that's a fun word, isn't it? Will not roast his game. I like that. But the diligent man will get precious wealth. The, the, uh, the Proverbs says those that that are slothful. In other words, they're lazy. That's really what Solomon is saying here. They will not be able to eat the meat that they go after and kill. But the diligent man, right, will be rich. The soul of the sluggard, don't call somebody a sluggard, craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. And I think this is the final one, Proverbs 21.5, the plans of the diligent, man, I like that. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So watch this. I, I want to talk for a minute about, about diligence, right? And you can bring up the next thought there. Diligence is a virtue. You need to know that. We talked last week about patience a little bit and how patience affects our, our attitude. Patience is a virtue. It'll hurt you. You heard me say that. What is a virtue? A virtue is a behavior of high moral standards. That's what we define a virtue as. So diligence is a virtue that honors the Lord and pleases Him. Diligence is defined simply as passionate determination and careful effort. Now think about that. We, don't, we often think of diligence just as doing, but it really is a heart attitude. I'll come back to that again in a few minutes. This heart attitude that pleases and honors the Lord. And we see that it is a passionate determination and careful effort. It pays attention to the small things. A person that is practicing diligence is doing something passionately, efficiently, and caring for the little details. In other words, there's, a, there's this attitude of excellence that comes along with this connection with diligence. Now, certainly, diligence and, and perseverance are connected. I would say they're first cousins for sure. And we talk often with our faith in reference to perseverance. And many times perseverance is worked out through diligence in our life and being diligent in our faith. And we are passionately and determined to and careful all at the same time to do what pleases and honors God. That's what diligence is all about. I'm grateful that we have a church of persistent, diligent people, people that are determined. I speak that to somebody today that you would get determined again in your faith. You would get determined again in areas maybe of your life where you've, you've slacked back a little bit. That's part of my prayer and why I preach this message to you today. As we're moving into the summer months, and I know we've already had some lag time that hasn't been normal the last two months, but my prayer for us is that we are getting more diligent in our faith and go 
going after God and, and how we're pursuing God. This is not a time to shrink back, my friend. This is a time to press into the Lord. This is a time to go after God in a fresh way. This is a time to take what the enemy meant for harm and use it for good, that we are moving to a new level that we never would have gone to as a church, family, and certainly you personally in your life that you are moving forward spiritually because you are diligent. You are determined. Somebody shout determined. determined. Reminds me of a story that I heard Paul Harvey, the late uh, great uh, radio host who's passed away now, shared a story of a three-year-old little boy. And uh, he, they were, he and his mom were, were headed to the grocery store. And, and uh, before they got there, you know, he's used to getting a chocolate chip cookie. That's one of his treats that he, he loves. And I get it. That's definitely one of my favorites. And, and she looks at him because I guess he had already had too much. And she said, look, now, now you're not having any chocolate chip cookies. And so you've got you've to gotta know that up front. Don't even ask. When we get down that aisle, just the answer is no. And so sure enough, they go down the different aisles and, and uh, this three-year-old little boy sitting up in the, the grocery you know, cart there and she's pushing him around. So they get to that aisle, they get to the chocolate chip cookies, you know, and he says, can I please have a chocolate chip cookie? And, and she says, absolutely not. I told you, don't even ask. And so they go on past, you know, that aisle, go to another aisle. And then, you know, the the mother realized that she had had forgotten something. So they go back to the aisle that the chocolate chip cookies are on and, and, um, you know, go past them again. He says, Mommy, can I please have some chocolate chip cookies? And, And she said, I told you no. Don't even ask again. That's it. No more. And so finally they're going to check out and they're in the, they're in the checkout line getting ready to uh, pay for the, the stuff that they got. And the little boy stands up in a, a cart and he says, in Jesus' name, can I have some chocolate chip cookies? True story, by the way. And sure enough, the people begin to laugh. Some of them even begin to applaud as this three-year-old little boy made a scene. And that little boy and his mom left there with 23 boxes of chocolate chip cookies that day. Come on, there's something to be said for being diligent, right, and being determined. And I'm not talking about being disrespectful, but I'm talking about a persistent faith that God has called you and I to have, especially during this season that we're pressing in and we're determined more than ever before to be passionate and we are pursuing the things of God carefully. We're dealing with people carefully. I think that's an interesting part of this definition of this powerful virtue is that it includes being careful of how we're dealing with our lives, how we're dealing with others, how we're dealing with our our spirituality. We need to be careful. We need to be careful. Uh, Here's a quote that I wanted to to bring up. We we talk about uh, growing, and I'll mention this a little bit Uh, later on in the message, Samuel Johnson says, what we hope to do with ease, we must first learn to do with diligence. So some of us, even spiritually, like it's a struggle sometimes to hit that groove or we look at other people and we say, man, I wish I could pray like that. Or I wish I could uh, uh, get a hold of God like that. We need to understand that spiritual growth comes out of discipline and it comes out of the discipline of diligence in our life of staying focused and staying determined well, let me give you some keys today. Here's, here's the, the meat of the message. Keys that we can have to help us understand diligence in a better way. And we'll look at some different scriptures as well. Here's the first thought, and this is really what, it's the only one I'm going to tell you what diligence is not, okay? Diligence is not striving or perfectionism. It's not striving or perfectionism. Now, remember this. This is so important because sometimes we can... Uh, in our humanity, we can move into this doing mindset. We're all about producing, right? And we're, we're always doing in our job. We're always doing with our family. We're always doing. And, and if we're not careful, we can move into this mindset that we are always striving forward. We're always uh, striving. And that takes us into perfectionism. And perfectionism is not always a bad thing, but it certainly can take you to this place where you are trying to earn a title or earn the next season or earn the next uh, promotion or whatever. And we can live in this place of striving and perfectionism. And that is not what diligence is about. So let me set somebody free today. God has not called you to strive and live in perfectionism. I must tell you, I, I am at, at my core, and I did, you know, years ago, did a personality 
uh, you know, evaluation, and I encourage, you know, I think that's important to do, to know about how you're hardwired, how God made you. Those are important things that we can do to, to know ourselves before we know others. That's, that helps you know how you're going to be affected by other personalities and so forth. And, and my personality, at the core of who I am, I am a perfectionist. And I was kind of surprised to hear that, but uh, that's something that is a gift, right? God made me that way. And so uh, I have to be very careful, though, that I don't put that on other people and, and put that on in other contexts uh, because it can become too demanding or I expect someone to do something just because that's the way that I would do it. But if I'm honest, most of the time, my perfectionism, it's on me. I, I probably take the brunt of it personally and internally uh, more than I put it on other people around me. But I have to make sure that I am remaining diligent without allowing perfectionism to be what drives me. You see, diligence will cause you to thrive. But when you are striving, it moves you into this place of never being able to be good enough. And that, my friend, is a trick of the enemy. Being diligent will take you to a place of thriving because it pleases and it honors God. But striving will take you to a place of never, ever being able to be good enough. You never match up. So you never have this sense of fulfillment. You never have this sense of, 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 of feeling like you're pleasing anyone. And most importantly, the Lord, that is not of God. But let's, let's talk for a, a, a moment, right? When we think of, of some of these uh, things, number two would be the next one, diligence. I must step on some toes here. Diligence will keep you away from procrastination. Come on, somebody. On the other side of this, we've got to know that being diligent keeps us on point so that we don't become distracted or we don't put off the things that matter the most. During this season right now of this quarantine and us having to social distance and not being able to be together, it can lend itself to putting off things that really matter the most. Hopefully there's been some good things that have come out of this. More family time, uh, more time to, to, to access things of the Spirit and grow in the Lord, maybe do some things around your house. But, uh, but watch this, if we're not careful, uh, when we don't have diligence, we begin to procrastinate. What is procrastination? Come on, you all know. Are you still there? Come on, say amen. Procrastination is pushing things off or, or not engaging things that you know you should engage. And we all do it. We're all guilty of procrastination, but diligence keeps us out of procrastination. And watch this. This includes half-hearted efforts and incomplete projects. Oh my goodness, I can feel conviction across the airways right now. Come on, how many of you have got some incomplete projects? Yes, we all do. I was thinking about this yesterday, and you know, we've been doing a lot around our house because there's been time and beautiful weather. We've been blessed to have beautiful weather uh, around this area during this crazy time, and I'm very, very grateful for that. That's a blessing. I know some places there it's been cold and snow and people shut in, not be able to, to get out. I looked at, uh, we have a lot of gutters around our house and I don't, we don't have guards on them. So I had our, our boys helping clean some of them out and they did the critical ones, but I looked up yesterday and, and uh, we have an incomplete project right now in our gutters around our house and they are overflowing and they need some assistance. Uh, and so boys, get ready. Daddy's got a list. It's ever growing, and I don't mind getting up there either. But, but this it, procrastination includes half-hearted efforts and incomplete projects, things that that uh, that we know we should do, but we either only do them halfway, or we don't do them at all, and we push them out. And again, I'm not just talking about projects. We all have projects, things that we're working on. But what about some of the most important things? What about your spirituality? What about your relationship with the Lord? You see, it requires diligence to push away procrastination to say, no, today I'm going to get a plan of action to go after God. I'm going to get a consistency back in my life that has diligence attached to it that helps me stay the course and stay connected to my God. That's so important right now. And, and that's why I feel this message is so relevant today as we go into the summer months that we need to be diligent because this is not a time to pull back. This is not a time to relax spiritually. This is a time to ramp up, my friends. 
friend. This is a time to go deeper than you've ever gone before. This is a time to reach out for God in a way you never have before. This is a time to hunger and thirst after righteousness like you never have before. Let's don't go after the pattern of this world, which is full of fear and discouragement and being slothful and being a sluggard and just saying, oh, just trying to chill out and hang out right now. No, this is a time for the church and for believers to rev up spiritually like we never have before. Could it be that God has given us this season as a gift to go after him like we never have before because there is a tidal wave of revival that's coming to his church and we're going to be ready for it. Amen. I want to be a part of that. I know you want to be a part of that. So let's prepare our hearts for that. Let's don't do what Proverbs says. Listen to what Proverbs talks about in chapter 6, 6 through 11. Again, the author says, hey, go to the ant. Like, use him as an example. Oh, sluggard. That's it. He's talking to somebody. Somebody that's being lazy. He says, go to the ant. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. How long will you lie there, oh, sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? Oh, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and, and, want, like an, and want you like an armed man. So keep that up there for a minute. Listen to the pattern here that uh, the author of this proverb is saying. He's saying, look, if, if you relax right now, you're going to miss out and the enemy is going to rob you. Come on. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he loves it when we as the people of God wear the, the title of Christian and we have salvation in our life and we just sit back and do nothing. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, and the enemy will come and he will strip you. He will take you to a place of being spiritually uh, uh, poverty in your life. And so God wants us right now to be aware to be aware that this is not a time to sit back. Don't be the sluggard, amen. Don't be slothful right now spiritually. Stay connected and be plugged in. I heard this analogy recently. I, I, I'll ask you this question. Are you a Wi-Fi Christian or are you a data plan Christian? Are you a Wi-Fi Christian or a data plan Christian? Most of us on our phones, uh, we have a, attached to them as part of our service that we pay for monthly. Uh, a data service, right? And that data service allows you to connect to the internet. It allows you to, to use different apps, different ways. And, uh, and, and that's, you know, that's part of what you pay for. And some of us have different plans as it relates to that. And so I ask you the question, are you a Wi-Fi Christian or are you a data plan Christian? I know when I asked Tiffany this on the way to church this morning, and, and she said, I, I think I'm a Wi-Fi Christian. And she's like, what does that mean? So, so I, I'll tell you, I, and immediately at first glance, I'm, I'm like, well, I'm a Wi-Fi Christian. But can I tell you, a Wi-Fi Christian can only connect to other people's service. So don't be a Wi-Fi Christian. Be a data plan Christian, because when you have a data plan, for the most part, depending on who's your carrier, you can connect to the internet wherever you're at. You don't have to be connected to someone else's connection because you have your own connection. And right now, it's time to be a data plan, Christian. God has a data plan for you to connect with him all the time. And you don't need your pastor to do that. You don't need this incredible worship team to do that, my friend. You don't need somebody else around you to do that. I love relationships, and I wish we could be more connected right now. But you can connect to God because you are a data plan, Christian. So realize that today. The enemy does not want you to have that connection. He wants you to depend on others. You know, right now we're all, you know, I think struggling because we can't be together as much. Hopefully that changes soon and we're we're missing out on that connection because we depend on that not only for social reasons and emotional reasons, but also spiritual reasons. But let me remind you today, you can connect to God on your own. I encourage you to do that. Grow that so that the enemy doesn't come in and strip you of what matters the most in your life. So when we think of procrastination, again, we've got to realize that there are, there are always going to be opportunities for the enemy to steal things from our life. And here's what happens. And again, if I'm stepping on your toes today, I'm talking to me too. Excuses are the enemy of diligence. Excuses are the enemy of diligence. There will always be excuses 
to not go after God or to not get up early and pray or to, to not, even physically, to not exercise and just, you know, eat the next whatever. You fill in the blank there. We, we've been eating good at the Skipper house as of late. But excuses are always there, and excuses are always present. What about this? What about in a marriage today? There's always an excuse of why God can't work, maybe, or God can't heal the relationship, or God, maybe you're in debt today and you feel like you can't get out. There's always excuses of why you can't do the next right thing. And my friend, I want to encourage you to expose excuses today in your life. Expose excuses, because they will steal your ability to be diligent. Remember, being diligent honors and pleases God. It's, and, and denying those excuses says, I will not be slothful. I am not going to be the sluggard. I'm not going to let the enemy strip anything else good that God's given me in my life. And we've got a great example, as you know, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who never did anything halfway. Come on, think about it. Jesus never halfway healed somebody. Wouldn't that be funny? Hey, I'm, I'm just going to heal one of your legs and you can, you can jump around. No, I'm just going to heal one of your eyes and you can you manage with the other one, right? I, I, I'm just going to heal you partially, not, not the whole way. No, Jesus showed us in every way how to be diligent, go all the way. I'm glad Jesus didn't go halfway up Calvary. Come on, amen? I'm glad he went all the way for our benefit Come on, look at, I encourage you to even look for a passage where Jesus did something halfway. Never. He always went all in. He never made an excuse to not complete something or go all the way. He never procrastinated to do the will of the Father. He was always on point. Now, I'm not telling you again that we're always capable of that, but let's remember, as we said the first week of this series, in Christ, amen? The promises of God are yes and in Christ. Amen. Through Christ Jesus, I can do all things. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I've got the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living in me. And that empowers me not to be perfect, but it empowers me to do the next right thing in my life with diligence. With diligence. Let, let's keep going here. Number three. And we're already on number three. Number three, this is key right here. Diligence is the key to your spiritual growth. Diligence is the key. Remember, diligence is a virtue. It's a behavior that, that imposes higher moral character in your life, to be more like Christ. And it, it's this determination to be careful in how you live your life. Very important. To pay attention to the details. Not just sitting back, yeah, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little backing off of tuning in on Sunday mornings at church, a little backing off of, of being consistent in your, your Bible reading or journaling or talking to the Lord, a little sleep, a little sleep, and it pulls us away, and as a result, we stop growing spiritually. One of the things that the enemy would love to do in your life, and certainly even in our church right now, is for us to just stall out spiritually, but that's not going to happen. Because we are becoming more diligently. We're like Caleb, as we studied last week. We are being wholeheartedly pursuing the things of God in our life. We're not going to let go of the promise just because we've got it. We're going to fight to hang on to it with all diligence in our life. Diligence is, is so important. And remember, as I say often, growth is, is critical to your life. And healthy things grow. Healthy things become more fruitful in our lives. And when we think of that, I want to read this next passage to you out of 2 Peter. And I want you to hear some of the theme here as he talks through. Again, he's talking to believers and he says this, therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul, listen to what he says here, our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. Listen to what he says. As he does in all the letters when he speaks in these things and these matters, there are some things in them that are hard to understand. Come on, Peter's talking about Paul here which they did not always see eye to eye. And, and Peter, who's a fisherman, let's remember, Paul would, would have been a Sadducee and a, a man of high scholarly intelligence. 
Peter says, some of the things he writes are not easy to understand, which the ignorant and the unstable twist to their own destruction as they do other scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. In other words, you become unstable and you stop growing. Listen to what he says. But grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Peter is saying, hey, look, don't get caught up in all the, the fancy stuff. And again, Paul had some great, we know, great, great, uh, incredible truth that still applies to our life today. But Peter says, don't get caught up in all that, but continue to grow in grace. When we're diligent and we stay focused spiritually, we're going to grow in grace. What does that mean? When you grow in grace, you get more stable. When you grow in grace, you become more fruitful. That's what Peter's talking about here. He's saying, look, don't get caught up in all the words and things that are being talked about because you'll become unstable. But stay focused on the Lord. Stay focused on what he's done in your life and you will grow in grace and as a result, you will get stronger. You will become more sturdy and you will become more usable and pliable for the Lord to be able to use your life for his glory and his honor. You gotta keep growing. Sometimes we... We make the mistake, and especially those of us that maybe have been, been a Christian for some time, that, well, I've encountered the Lord before, and, and that's enough. Or I've had an experience with the Lord before, and that's, that's enough. Can I tell you, God has fresh encounters waiting for you. And I, I believe it, it's good that we look back and we remember what God's done in our life. I'm grateful that I look back at certain times and I know God spoke to me or I know God met me at an altar. or I know God did something supernatural in my spirit. God filled me with the Holy Spirit. God saved me. God delivered me. God brought freedom into my life, spoke a word, a rhema word. And I love those experiences. But can I tell you, there's so many more in front of your life today. And God wants you to experience more of those. He wants us to experience more of those. Thank God for the past experiences. But let's not live off those experiences to the point that they keep us from experiencing the fresh ones in front of us. I love A.W. Tozer. Uh, he's a deep spiritual author. And his book, The Pursuit of God, one of the first discipleship books uh, I read years and years ago. It's a small read. I encourage you to get it if you don't have it as a part of your library. But he says this in this book, and again, a deep thought here. He says, We have been snared in the coils of spurious logic, which insists that if we have found God, we need no more seek after him. What is he saying there? He's saying we have, we have been ransacked by the things of this world to think that just because we've experienced God, that there's not more to experience of him. And we've relaxed to the point that we think we don't need to pursue God anymore. Come on, I'm here to tell somebody today, it's time to go after God in a fresh way, that there's new ground that he wants to take you to, that there's fresh new thoughts out of his throne room that he wants to bring into your life, that there's joy that he wants to bring, peace, healing, restoration into somebody's life today. Just because you've encountered God before doesn't mean that there's not more to encounter. And God wants us to encounter him more and deeper than we've ever gone before. Come on, can somebody say amen today? Amen. Let, let me, here's a, another thought here that I wanted to, to keep going with. You can go to the next slide there. I want to focus right here for a few minutes, and it's, it's a final thought, but I'm not done, so hang with me. Diligence, number four, keeps our hearts choosing the right things. Diligence keeps our hearts. It's the key to growth, but it keeps our hearts choosing the right thing. That's a key word right there, to choose. You are a result today of your choices. If you've accepted Jesus into your life today, then, then that's a result of a choice that you made. Life is full of choices. And diligence, again, honors, pleases God, keeps us in a place where we're choosing the right thing. We're choosing to pursue the Lord. We're choosing the next right thing, to stay focused on him to pursue after the things of the Lord in our life. It keeps our heart choosing the right thing. I wanted to bring up the, the Latin word uh, for 
uh, for diligent or where the word uh, is derived from. And I don't know that I can say it. You don't really speak Latin, but diligentia, diligentia. That's probably close. You can shake your head. Yep. And here's, but here's what's cool. It comes from two words that mean to choose and to love. That's interesting. That the root word for diligence is rooted in these two thoughts, to choose and to love. Now that, that's kind of cool to, to think about. And, and the, the next thought there, the diligent, in other words, are loving because they choose to stay committed. The diligent are loving because they choose to stay committed. Come on, stay with me right here. Stay with me. Don't miss this. This is the key. Because life is not always easy. But you've got to choose, as we said a few weeks, you've got to choose joy. You've got to choose to serve the Lord. You've got to choose to not walk in fear in this crazy time that we live in and get caught up in all the vain imaginations. You've got to choose to say, no, I'm going to have the mind of Christ. I'm going to speak over my life today that that I'm the head and not the tail, that I'm on top, not beneath, that God is for me, not against me, that God is fighting my battles for me today. You've got to choose to walk in love with people. And and the key with that is, is you can't always trust your feelings. Tiffany, will you, will you come here real quick? I, I've used this illustration before, but I, I will again this morning just to prove, prove my point and to show off my wife. We don't have a perfect marriage. You can say amen. Amen. <clears throat> we have a great marriage, but it's not because it just happens. It's not because... Uh, in July 29th, 1994, coming up on 26 years in a couple of months, it's not just because on that day we said some vows to each other and had witnesses in attendance and, and uh, pastors that were there present with us. It wasn't just because we had communion together at that altar and lit a unity candle. They don't do that much anymore. It wasn't just because uh, we had a beautiful wedding ceremony and setting and beautiful cake. Uh, It wasn't just because she put a ring on it. It wasn't just because we went on a honeymoon. The reason we have the marriage we have today is because we choose to love each other. We choose, in other words, we choose to be diligent Diligence, powerful word. Again, it's not doing, it's more about choosing. The doing follows the choosing. You see, I choose to love my wife. Do I always feel it? (laughs) No, I don't, if I'm honest. And I know she would say the same thing. But watch this we choose. We choose love. We choose that this marriage will live and continue to affect generations to come. We choose one another. We choose that beyond the feeling, beyond what's going on circumstantially around our life, we choose to be diligent to choose love in our relationship. I'm using this as one example. You must do the same thing in your own life. To be diligent to choose to love, because that's the root meaning of the word. To be diligent is to choose love. Thank you, baby. To choose to love. Being diligent is making the choice to walk in love. So watch this. We could say, because not everything in life is fun these days. Not everything, our jobs or, or raising kids or maybe your marriage or maybe your finances or maybe your health today. But watch this. Diligence gives you the ability to make a labor of love. It's not easy. But you know what? I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to make that area of my life. I'm going to be diligent in that area of my life. It's not easy, but I'm going to make it a labor of love. Man, I like that. A labor of love. We often hear that term and we we kind of say it tongue in cheek because it's like, I do it, but I don't really enjoy it. But watch this. Really, when you look at that term, it's something you got to work at. 
And love is, means you choose to do it. You choose to follow after the things of God. You choose to put God first in your life. You choose to, to continue to be steadfast in your faith, although it would be easy to relax right now and just let your guard down. You choose to be vigilant in your faith, amen, guarding your heart against the things of this world. Be diligent. Be diligent. And it will help you choose the right things in your life. Choosing to love and staying committed today. Staying committed. I wanted to read to you a story that I read recently out of a book. I just thought it was a great story, an example of of diligence. I need my glasses to do this. The worship team can make fun of me. The story of a woman who had incredible character, but certainly had the incredible virtue of diligence. When Osceola... McCarty was in sixth grade. She dropped out of elementary school to become the principal caregiver for her dying aunt. She never returned to school, working instead doing laundry and ironing for Hattiesburg, Mississippi's aristocracy. In 1920, a 12-year-old African-American with a sixth grade education had little to look forward to but hard work. Osceola McCarty turned her life of service into an anthem to character. Caring for her aunt, then her grandmother, and finally her mother, Osceola became the family hospice. She supported herself and her relatives with the work as she cooked and domestic, and in the process earned herself public reputation as trustworthy, loyal, and diligent. In private, except where there there was no except local bankers, except where there only were local bankers to see, excuse me, Osceola McCarty was carving into her youthful character a strength that was eventually to benefit many. Year after year, for more than seven decades, she lived and earned true fragility, even on her marginal income. Living at what some would call poverty level, she still saved. In local banks, she was buying CDs, setting aside the small but regular deposits. Osceola McCarty found herself at the age of 88, prepared and empowered to do grandly what she had done her whole life. In July of 1995, a humble washerwoman who never attended junior high school presented the University of Southern Mississippi with a check for $150,000. An endowed scholarship for minority students that now helps others to an education that she never received. A stunned USM administrator said, this is by far the largest gift ever given to USM by an African American. We are overwhelmed and humbled by what she has done. A life of character with diligence, humility, hardworking, sacrificial, built on the conviction that servanthood is noble and important, now enables a new generation to find success through education. The character of Osceola McCarty, however, is her most enduring contribution. Out of a lifetime of laundry, sometimes earning only a dollar a bundle, Osceola McCarty, in quiet character and diligence, earned and served, saved so that others might receive. You know, that's what diligence is all about. It's about being steadfast and staying the course, not just for your own benefit, but to bless someone else. What a great example of what diligence is all about. Being steadfast. Come on, it's a marathon, not a sprint. We've got to be steady. Stay the course. Stay committed. Stay in love. Be diligent and choose to honor God with your life because that's what diligence is all about. As we close out this series and start a new one next week, I want to challenge you. Say, well, you know, I, I'm real thin in my life. You know, I got a lot going on. It's, it's, it's quarantine season, but it's still crazy. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. I get it. I understand. But God's calling you and I to a higher level of commitment in Him. And it doesn't mean doing more. It means choosing more. I'm going to say it again. It doesn't mean doing more. It means choosing more. He's the God of more. And when we choose him with all diligence and we don't procrastinate in the things of God and we stay focused, growth begins to happen. 
come on, supernatural things begin to occur. You begin to recognize the favor of God in your life because you're growing in grace. You're growing in the things of the Spirit because God's moving right now. And if you can't see Him, you need to know God wants to show you things that are happening right now around your life, around your family, around your future. God is out in front of you today, my friend. And as you grow in grace and you grow in being diligent with the Lord and you stay committed, you're going to find that God begins to work supernaturally around you. And just like Osceola McCarty, down the road somewhere, you look back and you're ready to be a blessing to the world around you. Amen. I'll I read this last scripture in closing. It really is closing. Listen to what Peter says later on in that same passage we said earlier. He says, for this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. Come on, this is what we're talking about. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Here we'll close with this. Therefore, brothers, he says, be all the more, come on, say it with me, diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. Man, what a promise from God's word. As we close out this series on promises, what a great thought. If we'll hang on to these virtues, if we'll be diligent in our faith, the Bible says that we will not fall. It doesn't mean we don't stumble. It doesn't mean we don't make mistakes, but we can be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. We can be stable, amen, because we're growing in God's grace. We can be secure in our salvation. We can know that God's joy is our strength, that it doesn't come from the things of this world, amen, from the turmoil and things that are happening. We are steadfast because we're diligent in our faith. Amen. Would you stand to your feet there in your home if you're able? I want to pray today and then we're going to close and sing this song. Father, I thank you today for who you are. I thank you that you're moving right now through the airways into every person's home, through every device that's watching right now, Lord. I thank you for diligence, God. I thank you for a steadfast faith, Lord, that wherever they're at, wherever they may be weak today, I speak strength, God. I thank you that you're moving on their behalf, God, that you're moving mountains out of their way. There's things in the spirit, God, that you're revealing to them. That there's encouragement, God, that's coming as your people are diligent today. Thank you that your favor, God, would rest upon them. That they're growing in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they know who they are as a son and a daughter of the Most High God. I speak it over them today. They know who they are in Jesus Christ. Come on, let's sing. I am chosen, not forsaken, and I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me, and I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken, I am who you say I am. You are for me. Say
God. We bless you. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you that we are secure in our identity today. Lord, I thank you right now for every person that's, that's watching today. I pray for someone today that maybe, maybe they're not secure in that identity. Maybe they've lost that identity. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you sit there and those words that we sing, you can sing them, but they're not meaningful to you today. Can I invite you just to a, a connection point of salvation with the Lord? God loves you today, right where you're at. If you're watching this at a later time, you need to know today, God loves you. The perfect love. It's a love you'll never be able to produce, but it is a love that you can receive and can contain in your heart and your life. And that love causes you to live a diligent life, a steadfast life, a stable life. God's called us as his people right now to not be double-minded, but be stable in all of our ways as we acknowledge him. So I want to invite you today to say this prayer after me. It's real simple. Salvation's so easy. You just have to receive what the Lord has done for you through his son, Jesus Christ. He paid the price. He was perfection because we can never produce it. Just say these words after me. Heavenly Father, here's my life. I give it to you as an offering. Thank you for your sacrifice through your son, Jesus Christ who paid the price for my sin, all my mistakes. I ask you to cleanse me with his perfect blood. Wash away my sins. Make me a new creation in Christ Jesus. I believe from this moment on. Come on, say that in. I believe from this moment on. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God is for me and not against me. Now say these words, devil, your plan is finished. It's severed through the blood of Jesus. You have no more power over my life. It's a new beginning. I declare it today that I am victorious and I have full access to the promises of God, which are yes and in Christ, amen. 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 Hey, if you said that prayer today, maybe it's for the first time, or maybe it's just a reconnect back to the Lord today, I want to invite you to let us know. We want to pray with you. We want to be connected to you. Uh, we, we want to make sure that you're set up spiritually uh, to be able to walk with diligence in your heart. So let us know. Go on the website and, uh, and communicate that. At the very least, we want to be able to pray over you this week. And just pray God's protection and strength over you today. Thank you for tuning in. Let me bless you today. God, thank you for your people that are watching today. Lord, I just speak your greatest blessings over them. I thank you, Lord, that your protection is over them. That you are watching over them. That your ministering angels, God, are, are around them, around their home. God, I thank you for, for those that are, maybe their, their job has them in a... In a, in a sensitive place, and it's not easy. God, I pray that you would equip them in every way, emotionally, spiritually, and certainly protect them physically, God. I pray for the businessman or woman that's watching today, and times are tough. God, I pray protection over them. I pray provision, God, would flow over them. I, I pray supernatural favor would come to them, streams of revenue that they never would be able to predict otherwise. I pray for all those that are having to deal with this virtual world right now, God, that you would give them endurance. They would stay diligent during this season. And we as a church, God, that you would, you, Lord, you would just continue to grow us, maybe in ways we'd never grow otherwise. So bless your people today, God. Watch over them. Look after them in every way. Lord, I, I pray that faith would be ignited in their heart like never before. And until we can be back together in person, God, I thank you that you are strengthening us in the connection of the Spirit. We bless you today. We honor you. We give all praise and glory and honor back to you. We thank you for the word that we'll leave with Hebrews 11:6. that you are a rewarder of those that diligently seek after you. In Jesus' name, everybody shouted together, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a great week praying for you. Look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. We'll communicate. Stay tuned. God bless.